Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss a new command which is called range stat. It is a user written command, so if you haven't installed it, you would have to use SNC install to install this command. Uh, so let me give you uh, an overview of this command, what, what this command is capable of. Uh, this command can be used for moving averages or moving regression or rolling window statistics, right? So in our previous video, we also did ASRAG, which was used for uh, rolling regression. But ASRAG is limited in a sense because it can only do uh, rolling regressions. It can it cannot do rolling uh, moving averages or moving standard deviations, etc. or kurtosis. Uh, so it is just limited towards the regression. But in case of range stat, it is flexible because it can do other a whole range of statistics as well over a rolling window. Uh, so uh, let's use this data set. I had been using this for past couple of videos. We have uh, daily data stock return and S&P 500 return for different stocks. We have Apple, we have GE, General Motor and Microsoft. We have these four stocks <laughs> and we are going to use range stat. So we write the command name then within parenthesis the the statistics that we want to apply. So in this case, we are going to do a regression and then we would move to other statistics as well. And then the independent variable and the dependent variable in case if we have regression, then the interval. So in this case, I'm telling it that my date or time variable is within this date variable. The time information is within this date variable. And I'm going to give it a low and the high value of the window or the range. So past 30 days uh, till today. Uh, by symbol because we have different symbols. Uh, if I execute this regression, it would give me the R square, the adjusted R square, the regression coefficient, co constant, the standard error of the co uh, regression coefficient and the standard error of the constant and also the number of observations. So now you would see here that it says three number of observations. What it means is that for this specific regression, it took these three observations. For this one, it took these four observations. For this one, it took these five observations. So why is it taking uh, the last number of observations as uh, opposed to what we stated? And that is one of the limitation because it of the range stat, it would take uh, the um, the regression, it would run the regressions where the number of observations do not even meet the criteria, right? So it would, it is going to take less number of observations, but we would come back towards that and there is a way around with that. So uh, if we move forward, then we would see 20, 21 and 22 observations, but we would never see 30 observations or greater than more than 23 observations. And the reason is that range stat by default is taking uh, calendar days. So let's say if I is going to generate run regression for this, uh, uh, this regression, it is going to take past 30 calendar days from 3rd Feb till 3rd January. That is 30, 31 calendar days, not trading days. Obviously the trading days are 22 or 21 and so on and so forth. So by default, it is going to take calendar days. Uh, but I would prefer trading days and that there is a way around with that. So let me just f first drop all these uh, variables that had been generated. So we remove the clutter. Uh, okay, so for that I would have to generate, if I am going to use trading days, I would have to generate date ID and it would contain a serial number. Uh, so this date ID would be generated for each year, for each symbol separately. So remember this is the uh, sim, uh, serial number of the observations and if I move towards the second uh, symbol in my data, the from the second symbol it would uh, restart the serial number. That is what the by symbol would do. Okay. Now if I were to run regression, this is the same command I used as above, but now instead of date, I'm going to tell it to use date ID as your time variable. 
Now again it is going to run regression where the number of observations are lesser but if we scroll down we would see 31 uh, a constant number uh, there, from there on. And what it means is that till uh, it reaches uh, you know um, for, from here on it would take 31 number of observations right. Uh, what we can do is simply we can uh, write drop if regression observations are less than 31 so it would drop all these observations where the number of observations were less than uh, 30. Uh, 31. Now why it is taking 31 rather than uh, 30 observations because we said a previous 30 observations and the reason is we used 0 and what 0 means is that current observations for this regression it took all these 31 observations then for this regression it took these 31 observations excluding the first one. So for so 0 means that you also need to take the current uh, values uh, for the regression, but what if we wanted to ex exclude the current values then the way around is to use Minus one so it, it would do is take minus one Right, so for this regression it wouldn't include this observation rather start from the previous date till uh, previous 30 observations, right? Okay, so I'm not going to drop observations because I, I need them for future analysis uh, let me also under, make you understand how this uh, interval uh, is written. So we write the variable name, then the low value and the high range value. Uh, so we can do, let's say if we have years minus five zero, or we can also go forward. Uh, so for forward, we wouldn't need to use plus, we just use the integer. We can also simply use a zero for, that means starting with the current, uh, moving towards next for observations or years. Uh, okay, remember uh, I talked about excluding the self observations, right? And we did that with minus one, but we can use the exclude self option. Uh, so let me drop all these observations so that we have removed the collector. So instead of using minus one, what I can do is use exclude self option. This is the same command as I did over here, except for this new option what it would do is it would uh, exclude the current observation and take the previous ones right so that is equivalent to using minus one we can also do other statistics like mean median standard deviation sum etc uh, let me again remove these observations these values these variables so that we can uh, move forward so we use a range stat uh, mean of stock return and S&P 500. Now what, uh, what statistics can we use? We can look at that from the help menu. So it is going to tell us that we have two options. We either use stat or we use flexible stat. What flexible stat means is that we use correlation, covariance or regression. And uh, what stat means is that we can use observation, count, mean, sum, standard deviation, skewness, kurtosis, right? So <clears throat> there's a minus difference uh, of writing these two syntaxes. I, I would come back to that. So we use range stat, mean of these two variables, interval, and the rest remains the same. Okay, so let me run this command. So it is going to calculate the mean, but remember it is not going to give us number of observation as it did with the regression. Uh, but there is a way around what we can do is we can include another statistics of observations. Uh, we can also do multiple statistics in same command. So we write command name, median, and whatever variable we write after this parenthesis median, it would calculate median for these two variable. We can do another statistics. Remember, we are doing multiple statistics in same command, sum of stock return, and number of observations of stock return. The interval and the bias symbol remains the same. So it calculated the median, the sum, and the number of observations. Remember, the number of observations is again trading days 
and they are 31 because I haven't included the exclude self option, right? Okay, so let me drop all these variables. So what we can do is we can do multiple statistics in same single command, right? We can also give them <coughs> names of our own choice. So if I can again rerun this command, we can see that there are weird name of these variables. <clears throat> what if we wanted to give them some nice name? And the syntax is over here. We write the uh, new variable name and then the variable name that we want uh, the statistics for. <clears throat> so in this case, mean for, uh, if want to mean of stock return, we can give it a name of mean stock return. That would be equal to this variable. And then uh, mean of S&P 500, this is the new name of the mean of this variable. This is the name of the sum of this variable and so on and so forth. So you can see that now the names are uh, making sense, right? Let me drop all these variables except for the date ID. Okay. Okay, so we can use if and in qualifiers. Uh, so if you wanted to execute uh, rolling mean of stock return just for the Apple stock, then we would use the if symbol is equal to Apple. And then that would only calculate rolling windows for Apple and for the rest of the symbol, it would remain uh, missing. We can also use in qualifier, so it would just calculate the rolling window for first 500 observations. Uh, and for the rest, it would remain uh, empty, right? So it just calculated for first 500 observations. Uh, then we have case wise option. We can use case wise option. Uh, and what it would do is if there is a missing value, right? So for example, uh, let's just say this was a missing value. Uh, then it would not calculate mean for include this whole row when it is calculating the mean. Uh, but in case of regression correlation where there are flexible statistics, the case wise deletion is already done by default because uh, if we have independent variable and dependent variable and there is some value missing for any of the variable in the regression, then the regression would by default exclude that specific case. We can also describe so what describe would do is while running this regression, we did the regression, rolling regression, it would just give us a description of all the variables that are generated. So this is reg n o b s means number of observation for the regression of stock return on S&P 500. We can do recursive windows and what recursive windows means is that the starting window would remain fixed, the starting range would remain fixed, the lower range, this part of the range would remain fixed, but the higher would keep on moving forward. Uh, let me execute this recursive. The only difference that I made is in the interval. So the low would remain dot and the high would be zero. Uh, this is the way of writing a recursive window if we are using range stat. I did recursive window in ASRAG also. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, it started with less number of observations, but as it keep moving forward, the it, it is taking higher number of observations. For this one, it took uh, all these 75 observations, right? And for the next one, it took all these 76 observation and so on and so forth. So the number of observation would increase, uh, keep on increasing. The low value would uh, be fixed, but the higher would keep on increasing. And what did we generate? We generated the mean, gave the name also, and then generated the number of observations also. Uh, that is what we have already discussed. We can do re uh, reversed recursive. Uh, that is the opposite of this one. So instead of, uh, uh, fixing the lower range, uh, we can fix the higher range. So we would give uh, missing value with or dot with the higher range and zero with the lower range. And that would be the opposite of uh, recursive window. <coughs> uh, so this is how it is done, right? Uh, we can also take, uh, so this is what I have explained, fixed low or fixed high value with the dot. 
We can also do specific observation specific window and what that means is that we generate a variable uh, that would hold certain window uh, instead of giving a specific window like with all our previous examples we are giving a specific window but let's just say we have a variable uh, let's generate low variable generate low that is 50 percent of stock return and generate high which is 150 percent of stock return and we, instead of giving a specific value we are going to give these variables as low and high range so uh, we give the stock return uh, this is where we are going to look the range and this should be the lower range and this should be the higher range uh, so this is how it is going to execute so the idea is that you can instead of giving a specific range you can make it a more dynamic range right so thanks for watching this video do subscribe to this channel and if you have any question you can ask that in the comment box below